Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to share a trigger audio patterns with a sequencer in Reaper. I have a project in front of me here where I've already created a synth. And it sounds like this. But I want to trigger some repeating patterns that are hard to play. So let me show you how to set this up in Reaper. So the first thing we'll do is create a new track down here. We'll name it Sequencer. Then we'll put a Sequencer plugin on this track right here on the effects. We'll search Sequencer. And right over here is a plugin called MIDI Sequencer Mega Baby. Let's choose that. And this plugin will allow us to create patterns that can trigger our synth or any audio we want. So let's adjust the green section a little bit higher so we can see the key C3. And let's make quarter notes by just clicking in each box. And now we need to trigger a sound source. Let's make another plugin after it. We'll go to the Reaper plugins. And down over here is Rhea Synth which will create some sound to trigger the first synth. Let's switch this sound to be a sawtooth wave right here. Let's hear what it sounds like. It's just playing quarter notes based on a sequencer right here. We can adjust this later, but let's set it up to trigger the first synth. Let's start by turning off this sound source Go to the routing on this track and turn off the master parent send right here. Now we shouldn't hear it. Even though we see it playing on this track. So this sound is going to trigger the first synth. Let's go to the effects on that synth. And let's add a gate after that synth plugin. We'll go to the Reaper plugins and choose Rhea Gate. Then we'll send that sequencer sound source to this plugin. We'll drag the routing and drop it right here. And notice it sends audio channel one and two to three and four. So we can use three and four as a side chain. But we should turn off the MIDI because if we leave it on, the MIDI is going to trigger the first synth. We don't want it to do that. So let's turn it off right here. And now it's set up the gate to use a side chain using the feature here, detector input. If we switch it to auxiliary input left and right, it'll be triggered by that sound source, our sequencer. Let's bring this up and see if it shows up right here. And it does. So now we'll bring it down just below the level. Right about there. So now if I play my synth with my MIDI keyboard, we should hear that pattern being played, even though I'm going to play whole notes on the keyboard. And we could change our pattern to change our part. Let's go back to the sequencer and let's readjust the pattern. This is quarter notes. Let's change it to eighth notes like this and hear that. Or 16th notes, just drag it across. But notice there's a problem with 16th notes. The notes are too long, so we can't hear each separate note. So we can make them shorter right here. Let's hear that. That 
That's a little better for 16th notes, making each note a bit shorter. Let's put this back to full length. Let's switch these from 16th notes to longer quarter notes. So we'll hold down Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac, to make these notes longer, like this. So it's still quarter notes, but the length of the note is longer, which sounds like this. Or we could flip it around to play upbeats, like this. Or we could stagger them to play a dotted feel, like this, leaving one space between each one. And that sounds like this. Or we can create any pattern that we want. Let's make a custom pattern out of 16th notes, like this. Make it a bit shorter. And one of the best parts of setting this up is that we can save this in case you want to use it again on a different source or a different sound. And we could save it by just right clicking on the sequencer track, save tracks as track template, and then just save it in the track templates folder right here. I'll name it sequencer trigger track, and then save it. And then we'll go to the synth track and just save this gate. Right click it, go to effects chains, and save selected effects as a chain. And we'll name this Triggered Gate. Save it. So now if we start over with just the sound on this track, we can just right click over here, insert track from template, find that template right here. It brings in the track, go to our synth track, go to the effects chains, and choose triggered gate right here. And that puts the gate on the track. And all we have to do is send the sequencer track to it. Let's turn off the MIDI. And we should be good to go right here. And we can save a different track template for every pattern we want. But this will also work with our audio tracks that we've already recorded. Let's check out a project with a guitar. I have a guitar track right here that I've already recorded using long power chords, which sound like this. So we could apply the same effect to this. Just right click over here, insert track from template. We'll bring in when we created before. Then we we'll go to the guitar track, right click, effects chains, triggered gate, and just drag the sequencer track to the gate, turn off the MIDI, and we should be good to go using the previous sequence we already saved. We might want to tweak the gate for this. Adjust the release to be a bit shorter.
and we can make any pattern that we want, and it'll trigger this guitar to play it back, or any audio that you want. So that's pretty much it. That's triggering audio patterns with a sequencer in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.